Welcome to the world's best Facebook ads tutorial. It doesn't matter what skill level you're at, if you're a beginner, an intermediate, or an expert, you're going to find value in this training today. We're gonna to cover exactly when you should use Facebook advertising and when it won't work, how to sign up for Facebook, and a clear step-by-step -step process so that you can set up ads and start to get paying clients today. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna set up an ad account, then I'm gonna show you how to read the data, what's the best ads, and everything that you should be using on Facebook, but more importantly, how to not get banned. So by the end of this video, you're going to know how to run ads profitably and make a ton of money. And you're probably wondering why you should listen to me. Well, I'm the king of leads, and over the past almost decade, I've been responsible for over a hundred million dollars in sales in my niche of financial advisors and life insurance agents. And I personally have spent over five million dollars getting this system to work. So none of this is trial and error. This is all tried and true. And if you follow everything that I'm going to show you in this video, you're going to be armed and equipped to make sure that you can go to the marketplace and acquire clients profitably because we don't need more leads. We need more qualified booked calls. But more importantly, advertising has changed since the iOS 14 update. So if you're just getting into running ads online, long gone are the days where you could just slap up an ad and get leads for five bucks that are qualified. There are some specific things that you need to do and you need to have up and some buttons that you need to click in order for your ad campaigns to make it rain like Lil Wayne. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop right in. I'm gonna hop on my computer. And so what we're gonna cover today is when you should use Facebook ads to advertise and when it won't work, how to sign up for a Facebook ads account, and then a clear step-by-step -step of setting up the ads and then more importantly, how to read the data in the ad account. I can't tell you how many times um, I've had people just simply make emotional decisions. And when you're using emotional decisions in, in business, it's typically the wrong decision. You wanna base all of this off of data. And so who should be using Facebook advertising? Well, if you're a legion agency or social media marketing agency, financial advisor, or a life insurance agency, you should be using Facebook ads. And so why should you though? Because this is important. Well, there's 3 billion daily active users on Facebook at any time. And so there is roughly between seven to 8 billion people on the planet. And if my math serves me correctly, almost half the human race is a daily active user on Facebook. So what that means is the behavior of humans has changed. And so now we need to go where the humans are. My mentor always says that you don't need more money, you need more people. And so the, the Facebook platform is where all the daily active users are. And so we need to use it. But more importantly, this is where the money is, right? $36 billion a quarter is being spent on ad revenue. So if you want to have success, do what a successful person does. If you want to invest in something that is safe, that's going to grow your money, then invest where rich people are investing their money. And this is important because if $36 billion a quarter is going into ad revenue for Facebook, then that means that it's working. The other thing is, is a lot of other platforms, they just can't uh, perform with the cost per click. A lot of them may have a better user interface. They may have all these other things, but the truth is, is that they can't compete with a, a less than a dollar cost per click. And the reason why this is important is because your cost per click influences your CTR and your CTRs are click through rate, which influences your cost per lead, right? And if your cost per click is one, two, three dollars, that means your click through rate is going to be less than 1% which we'll get into in the future, but then ultimately your cost per lead is not going to be $10. It's going to be $30. And so, um, which leads to my next point, which is the average cost per lead on Facebook is only 10 bucks. So um, I know for a fact that if you're trying to do this on like SEO or on, on YouTube, right, you're competing with billion dollar companies, the actual insurance companies themselves. And so if you're trying to do that, 
Well, what's going to happen is, is, is your uh, cost per lead is going to be through the roof. And so Facebook is a place where you can level the playing fields so that if you're trying to acquire clients profitably, you can do that as a little guy. And so the things that we're going to set up today, business manager, we're going to set up the, the business page, um, Instagram, we're going to get your account verified. Um, we're going to touch on the pixel. For this uh, lead format, we're not really going to have to really do too much. Then we're going to set up the ad account. And so let's go ahead and set up your business manager. So one of the most important things is, is you want to make sure you input the right business information. Put your legal name, address, phone number, just make sure the stuff's accurate. A lot of times people get into going to set up their account and they just kind of, uh, they just want to get right to the ads, Right. And they make the mistake of going through the process um, to establish some verification with Facebook and they get their ad account shut down before they even get started. So we want to do that. Then we want to use the business verification status uh, to make sure that we register. We want to go to the people section and we want to add users. And then we want to set up the two factor authentication. So let's go ahead and just take a look and I'll show you exactly how this works. So here's a, a dummy account that we have here. And so what you can do is you can go over to, to all to business.facebook.com. So if I just go right here to business. All right. So if you go to business.facebook.com, then you can go ahead and set up an account. Okay. So that's step one. And then from here, what we want to do based off what I have here is we want to input your business information. So the reason why this is important is because you want to go down to uh, the, the all tools. And one of the things that's important about this is that everybody's business manager is going to look different because Facebook also split tests everything. So you can go down to branded safety and suitability. And so what you want to do is you want to go here to all tools. And then from here, you want to go to business settings. Business settings is kind of like the table of contents. So when you click on business settings, it's going to bring you here. And the first thing we want to do is you want to go down to business info here. And so what you're going to do again is you want to put your legal information in here, put your legal business name, your address and a business phone number and your website here. You also want to make sure that your info is correct in here. So you have a notification set up and then you want to make sure that you have two factor authentication on. Now, this is important for your safety because there is a lot of people who have been getting their Facebook ads manager hacked. There's a whole black market for marketers who have gotten their ad account shut down because Facebook is notorious for that, that they're selling warmed up business managers and you don't want yours to be one of those. So make sure that you have this two-factor authentication on. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a page or create a new page. We're going to connect our Instagram and our Facebook, and we're going to link these existing accounts. And we're just going to make sure they're warm um, uh, with the appropriate profile photo and profile name. So what you can do from the business settings, and so what you're going to do here is you're going to scroll down, you're going to create add an account. And then you're going to put in your ad account name, your business name. So Johnson Financial. Now, this is important. You know, make sure you get this right. Make sure you put in the proper time zone and then U.S. dollars. And then from here, it'll ask you to connect to whatever business manager you have. And then you'll um, hit create. Now, I'm not going to hit create because I already have multiple ad accounts, but um this is what you would do here. Okay, so now that you've created an ad account, we need to create a page. This is going to be your business page that represents your ad accounts. You can see this circle here in the top left and usually it says sponsor. And so what we want to do is, is we want to create a page. So yours will be blank. And you'll click add and then we'll click create a page. And then you'll put your name, your category, and then the bio. And it's really simple. Last name, financial. Um, so Johnson financial, right. Or, uh, Johnson solution, financial solutions or Johnson healthcare, whatever it is. And the category, um, that you want to use is, is probably finance. All right. And then you want to put your bio here and then you'll confirm it and then you'll hit done. 
Okay, so now you'll have a page here. And now what you want to do is you want to go to people and you want to invite people and you want to put your email address in here. So let Then you'll click next, and then you'll click here to go to full manage. And then from here, you'll hit next. And then from here, you'll just, you'll select the page. So your page will probably be here at the, at the first one. Then you'll come over here to the right and you will turn this toggle on. This gives you access to the, to the page that you just created. And then you want to come over here. And then you want to click um, and select the first ad account that we just created. And you want to click this. And then you want to click invite. And then it'll send you an email and you accept that. That is the verification. And that basically shows that you have ownership to your page. And so once you created your ad account, you want to go ahead and add your payment method. And um, one of the things I want to make sure you can use PayPal, you can use credit cards, but I would recommend that you don't use PayPal and just enter in a debit or a credit card. Now, the reason why this is important is because even if your car gets declined, it can get your ad account shut down. So make sure that you put a card on here that has at least 500 to a thousand bucks that Facebook is going to charge because again, they're going to be testing some small numbers in the beginning and they want to make sure that they can trust you as a business relationship. Also, they want to make sure that the money's coming out in small increments because they don't want you to come on this platform and use it for the first time and you lose 300, 500,000 bucks because then you won't come back and use it. They lose revenue and a customer and they get bad reviews because the user, the new user has a bad experience. So here's the old structure. There's a top of funnel um, campaign and then the middle of funnel and then a bottom of funnel. Now, again, that used to work, but now the new structure is we just want to have it all together. And that's kind of what I'm going to show you. And so here are some of the different types of ads that you can run. You can run image ads, you can run the video ads, you can run dynamic uh, creative and product ads, you can run carousels, or you can run collections. Um, and all of these ads work, but it just depends on um, what your product service or what it is that you offer. Um, and so you can see some of the different ways that um, you can advertise on Facebook here. You, we've all seen these before. If you just scroll for a couple seconds through your newsfeed, you'll see these and they all say sponsored, right? And these are some carousel ads as well. Um, and, and all of these work, right? You can use UGC, which is user generated content, unboxing content, humor, memes, influence, customer photos, and graphics. And again, all of those work, but specifically for uh, particularly my audience, which is um, life insurance agents and advisors, which format works the best for us, right? Do you want 20 to 30 booked appointments on your calendar every single month? Let me show you the three ways that AI can do all the work. So number one, AI does all the searching. AI pinpoints the best prospects of people who are ready to buy now. The second thing it does is it eliminates the need for cold calls and books qualified appointments on your calendar, eliminating all white space. The third thing is it gives you back your time. It finds high intent prospects who are looking to buy who you don't have to chase. If you want to implement AI into your advisory firm or your insurance business, go ahead, give me a follow and go through my past content as well as follow me on YouTube where I show you how to enter the AI revolution step by step. And so what you can see here is this is the principle of a good ad, right? And good ads explains the unique selling proposition. It educates or entertains the customer. Uh, it has great uh, insight and urgency. It's not pixelated. And more importantly, it's not boring. And so this is what you want to do. It's who you are, what it is that you have, why it's important and how they can get it. And so the next thing you want to do is we want to kind of define a budget. So we want to start with 50 bucks a day as a minimum and start slow. Facebook can ban you if you go too hard and you want to make sure that you spend that for at least four days in a row before you touch it and let the, and just let the algorithm cook. I can tell you right now, when you first start something within the first day, you're probably going to see one lead for 30 bucks, maybe uh, one lead for 50 bucks. But again, it's trying to find your ideal client. And so you just want to let it cook. And within four days, the algorithm will sort it out. 
This is the smartest thing. It knows more about us than we know about ourselves. And remember, this is a long-term strategy. This is not a get-rich-quick scheme. So this will take a few days to find your ideal customers. So which creatives should you use? Well, we're going to walk through that. You can use um, horizontal ones or vertical ones. I like to play around with both just to kind of depending, but for this uh, purpose, we're just going to use um, a print ad. And so I've tested them all. And what I found is that it just depends, right? Um, you want to test multiple creatives, um, horizontal and vertical, um, and, and uh, you know, just be scientific about the process. So you want to, add, so let's just recap real quick. You want to add a creative. You want to let it spin for four days. You want to kill it after four days if it's not making any sales. And if it's working, then you want to scale it. And then if it is working, you want to continue to add new creatives to it. So let's go ahead and set up a little bit of that. I got a, I got one here. We're going to go ahead and set one up together. So we have awareness, which is just, just brand awareness. We have traffic. Well, this could run traffic to your site. This will get you links. This will get you clicks. This will get you views. This will get you some messages. And then there's engagement. People that will engage and comment below, they'll like it and they'll share it. But what we want to do is we want to use leads because we want to have people to raise their hand so that specifically for a life insurance agent and financial advisors, we want to have people that can raise their hand and say they're interested in our ad. So we want to have educational entertainment content. We want to specifically use Facebook's uh, algorithm to find our ideal customers. And then we want to capture their information as soon as possible. Apps for promotion if you run the apps and then sales if you want to run custom conversions as to VSL. But for the purpose of this, we're going to select leads. All right. And so what, what um, Facebook is always testing out new things. But what we want to do is we want to keep it simple because we want to have as much control as possible. Because again, if you're a beginner and you're just getting started, you need to minimize the risk and the variables. So we want to make sure that um, we set this all up manually. So we're going to just cl click manual. And so from here, we're just going to name this. Let's just say we name this final expense campaign. All right, we we'll name this campaign, and then we'll um, say, what's today, 10, 16? We'll put the date on there. Now, this is very, very important. The objective is to get leads. We want to make sure that we leave the ad, uh, Advantage campaign budget off, and we want to leave A-B split test alone. Again, we want to keep this very, very simple. The whole purpose of us running this is to generate qualified leads as fast as possible. So we click Next. Right. And then from here, we want to have one objective. We'll come back to the ad set name in just a second. But the conversion that we want to do is we want to do instant forms. And so right here, you're just going to select your page. Your page should be here because we created that just a few minutes ago. And yours should be Johnson Financial or whatever it is. The whole purpose of what you're doing is to maximize leads. And then you want to put the budget at 50 to 100 bucks. I recommend starting at 50. We'll leave all at the same locations. This is important. So put all the states that you're licensed in in here. I can't tell you how many times people are like, well, I only want to do a couple states, this and that. Facebook knows everything. This is doing the prospecting for you. Give it the widest range to find the best uh uh, people, the best amount of people who are looking and ready to buy right now out of the 4 billion, three to 4 billion active users on Facebook, right? It needs to have enough people to reach. Put all the states that you're licensed in, in here. And so if you're licensed in all 50 states, perfect here. If not, then what you do is you just go here and you go New York, right? You go uh, Illinois. And you just go through and you put them in here, just like this. So you put all your states in, right? And now once you've done that, here's the important thing. You want to make sure that you switch to the original audience options. Use original audience options. This is very, very important because we're going to keep this simple. Now, now that we have this here, um, we want to keep the age range, right? We want to do... For the purpose of this, I think we're doing a final expense. So we want to do the age of 40 to 65 plus. And then we want to make sure that we turn off 
the detail, uh, the advantage detail targeting. And then for the demographic, right, we can type in um, retirement. Retirement insurance benefits, right? And then um, from here, placements, we can leave that all the same. Now that we have that in here, what I would do is I would take this, I would copy this, I will put this as the name so that we know exactly what we're doing here. And then I will do that. And then I'll put 40 to 65 plus as the age. And that will be, that will let me know what I am targeting. Now, the reason why all this is important is because this is what we're targeting here. So this is the targeting that we have here because we want Facebook to show their ads to these people. And again, Facebook is always going to be giving you suggestions like you just need to stay focused and just follow exactly what I'm, I'm showing you here. Again, I'm responsible for over $100 million um, of issue pay business since I've been doing this. And everybody, for the most part, that's an in insurance influencer or running ads or starting an agent or something like this. Since I've been doing this, thousands of people have come and go and they've all kind of copied me. So just trust me on this. So the next thing we want to do is we want to click next. And then we just want to use, I already know what it is. So I'm going to put the mass um, uh, print ad. And so you see your uh, page is, is here. And then um, it'll usually ask you to just like, uh, read the terms and conditions you click that and then you should be ready to go you can connect your instagram which is super easy you just click right here and select it and you log in and then it's going to say single ad that's what we're doing and then we want to unclick multi -ad advertiser ads and then from here we want to add an image so what i've done is is i have this template called the jet fuel template that has absolutely crushed it so we're going to use this to model in order to build our campaigns and our ads so what we're going to do here the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the image which is this right here i think this is the one that i was running for hall of famer dave torres back when we first started and so we want to just add that in here at this media and you just upload that right in there. All right. So we're going to select that. And then obviously the original one, one, it's not going to work. So we'll use that. Perfect. Some of these is one to one. Okay. Perfect. We click next, it'll optimize, it'll do everything that it needs to do. And so now we got the image in there, right? And then from here, we use the primary text. And so we have some primary text here. So we'll scroll back up and we'll grab this and copy it. And we'll put this in here. And then we also have a headline, which is pretty dope. We'll go back to here and we'll get this headline let's see. and we'll put this in here. And then you see here, this is kind of strange. They give you a bunch of suggestions. Cool, cool, cool. We'll come back in here and we'll pop that. We'll change that to 2025. <clears throat> and then the next step is states, uh, state templates. We already just just put your own states in there. And then um, the next thing we want to do is we want to just put this as learn more. Learn more is just the one that just has worked the most and the best. So we just want to continue to use that one. Learn more is just the one that we can use that is the best. It's just optimized to work. Um, it's not a hard ask. It's just something like, hey, if you want to learn more, just click here. And most people click that one. So just use that one. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to create a um, instant form. So yours will probably be empty, but obviously we run a ton of ads for a, a ton of different people. And so what you want to do is you want to create a form. So this means that if somebody clicks the learn more button, if somebody clicks the learn more button, then we want to capture their information. So you click create form. And then um, from here, we just want to name this the 
FBX mass form. Now this is important because if we don't name this right now, we can't go back and name this. Okay. So the final expense, Massachusetts form, then you want to click down here. The whole purpose of this is to get more volume. Then the next thing we want to do is the questions, right? We don't need any of this stuff because we just want to get the best information possible. So please answer the questions below. Please enter. What do I have on here? Best information below. And then, then we want to get, uh, um, uh, uh, um, okay. So now we just want to get name, email. We want to add different, a demographic and we want to get their phone number so we can reach out to them. And we want to put that up here. And then for the sake of this purpose, right, we just want to get this information here. Um, we can add some more things, but at this point, it's going to hurt our conversions. And so for a privacy policy, what you can do is um, we just have something in here already, but you can use your profile or you can go to privacy policy. .com and uh, privacy policy.com and you can generate one super simple. You can just Google that super easy. You put that in here and then we just want to say privacy policy here. You don't want to have any other disclaimers. And then um, right here, this is important because we want them to go to a website. So what you can do here, this is an opportunity for you, for them to go and watch a video or for them to book a call with you. And so from here, you can just put your calendar link. So we will pretend that this is your calendar link. Um, and we'll put that link there. And so you can put your calendar link or your, your CRM link there. And then we'll change this action to schedule now. And so now it says schedule now, and then now we can create this form. All right. And so now we created a form. So after we have created the ad, we hit, um, the first thing you want to do is you want to check everything, make sure it's all ready to rock. The AI is in here rocking to make sure that it's optimized, give me some variation so we can leave all of that in there. We got the we got the interest, we got the age, we got the campaign name. And so now the only thing we need to do, right, is we just need to go back and hit publish. You've now successfully created an ad. And from here, this is where you'll end up adding your payment information. So you'll go ahead and click here, click next, add your payment. Make sure that you put the proper billing information here. This is super simple. And then once you click next and you submit that, it will accept it. And then it will um, put your ads uh, into submission for review. Okay, so what results should be popping up in your platform now that we have um, launched your Facebook ads to even see if it's working and making sure that we got all of these details in here properly. So what you need to make sure is that you're tracking these important metrics, right? Which is ad spend, impressions, reach, link clicks, click-through rate, cost per click, cost per lead, leads, and then amount spent. Now, the reason why this is important is because um, impressions means how many time someone has seen your ad in their newsfeed, right? Reach is how many actual accounts have seen your ads. So one account could be reached, but it could have two or three impressions, if that makes sense. And then link clicks is how many times somebody has clicked the learn more button or they click the see more to read the rest of your ad. That click is how Facebook gets paid. So Facebook is a pay per click platform. So the more people that click, 
that's ultimately there's a certain amount of people that are going to click before they become a lead. And so those clicks is what you're paying for because ultimately one out of 10, one out of 20, one out of a hundred is going to click. And that's going to get you ultimately your cost per click, which then turns into your cost per lead. And so the reason why this is important is because all of these uh, metrics matter based off the creative, the targeting and the budget that you have set up. Because if your uh, click-through rate is really high, your cost per click is going to be high and your cost per lead is going to be high. So if you're only spending 20 bucks, it may cost you $20 if your creative is bad or your targeting is off. Ultimately, you're only going to get one lead and you're going to be just uh, wasting money. So these are the things that we want to track in the ads manager, which is ad spend, impressions, reach, link clicks, CTR, CPC, cost per lead, leads, and uh, amount spent. And so I'm going to just show you what those look like in the ads manager here. So we'll go back over here to ads manager. So we'll click publish uh, for this, or well, obviously we won't because you put a card on there, but if it was published, it would look like this. And then we would just go right here to reports. And then down here, we can create a custom report. So we want to go custom. And there's a bunch of stuff in here, but again, we want to keep this simple. So what we want to do is we want to go back to here and we want to use ad spend, right? So let's go to amount spent. We can pull this one up to the top. And then we want to get impressions. So we have impressions on here. We can move this one up to the top. And then we have reach and then link clicks. You can just type in link clicks. All right, link clicks, we click that. It will then add it to here. And then we wanna pull that one up to underneath reach. And then cost per click, All right? We can see that right here. We wanna click that one. And then we'll see it'll populate here. And we want to add that one underneath link clicks. And then obviously I think CTR is the next. Yeah, CTR. And so I think that one's before there. So it's no big deal. We can just add that here in between it. So we got the number of clicks, the percentage of clicks, and then the cost. Okay. Then the next thing we want to do is cost per lead, right? That's very important. So a lot of times it just gives us results, but we want the actual uh, data that says leads, right? So we go to leads and then we want to click on the total and we want to get the cost, okay? And so again, we have this results here, which is cool, but we don't want that. We want the actual leads and the cost. And so we click out of those and then we want to just drag this up again to be under cost per click here. I'm not sure why this is not Oop. down one here. And then obviously the amount, uh, the amount of leads and then obviously the cost per lead, which is important here. So we have those. And then the last one is amount spent. All right, so amount spent and budget, we need to switch. So budget there, and then the most important one is amount spent. So everything else we can get rid of. So we just click out of all of those, and then we wanna apply this. Now, the reason why this is important is because now we'll have this report here and it's custom. And then what we can do is we can save our custom reporting. So when we put this into our tracking sheet, we can um, be able to report on this data because you need to be tracking this. So we'll go, um, let's go FX add tracking, add metrics, excuse me. Okay, and so now that we named it, it is now set as a default. And so what happens here when we go and look at these things, 
we'll see that it is all set up because we want to be tracking all of this on a daily basis. So for example, if you wanted to just take a look and see what this actually looks like, if I do maximum, I believe there's some leads in here, it will give us um, the budget, impressions, link clicks, right? It'll give us the cost per click. It'll give us leads and it'll give us a amount spent. Now, why is this important? Because if we are using a tracking sheet, which is what we use, for our clients and for us as a company, right? We can see here, we can go in here and we can look, we can see that we spent $14,000 and we collected $108,000 in cash. We can see our cost per acquisition. We can see our ROI. We can see our cost per booked call. We can see our cost per lead. We can see our cost per survey and we can see our cost per booked call here. These are important. And so if you want this ad tracker, just uh, comment the word um, tracker below and I'll send it over to you. But this is going to be important because, again, you want to be making data driven decisions. And so these are the data points that you want to be tracking to make sure that your dashboard is set up properly so that you can make an analytical um, data driven decision to scale your ads. And so what is a profitable uh, ROAS for um, running ads. Well, the ROAS is your return on ad spend. And if you spend a thousand, you should get at least 3,000 to 500 uh, to 5,000 back. You will have a three to five X ROI. And you can, um, your target ROAS is entirely based on how much profit you can um, plan to make. So if you're selling something for a thousand dollars and it costs you $200 um, to acquire a customer, then you simply can spend $200 a day to get a client and liquidate your ad spend. And this is called client acquisition financing, right? Which is very, very important. And so what should your daily tracking KPIs be, which is a key performance indicator. And this is what numbers should tell you if your ads are performing or not. Because not only just to make sure that I feel like the costs should be between this, we should know what the typical uh, key performance indicators are to scale and use Facebook ads properly. And your CTR should be between 0.5 and 1%. Your CPC should be between $1 and $3. Your cost per lead should be between $10 and $20. Now, this is important because... We're not looking for cheap leads. You can go and buy age leads and old leads from lead vendors. But again, cheap leads is the reason why most people are going broke in this business. We need more qualified leads and more qualified booked calls. Long gone are the days where you can just get qualified leads for five bucks. Um, you know, I, I know it sucks, but again, it's like the price of bread and gas. It's not going down. Facebook has to make uh, money. So the cost of advertising is going up because more people are online advertising um, now than ever, especially going into the holidays. So this is why you want to try to optimize and get this right right now. So your cost per books call, CPBC, should be between $50 and $100, which means your cost per acquisition should be between 20, uh, 250 to 500 bucks. So depending on what you sell and what you can get commission for your product, if it's a thousand bucks, right? That's a, a 4X ROI. If you if your cost per acquisition is 250, if you if you, your average sale is 2000, right? Then that's a 10X. And if it's, um, if it's 10,000, right? Then it's, what is that, 20X? Um, and so these are the daily uh, tracking KPIs that um, you can use to know if your ads are performing properly and if you can scale. And so if you found this training helpful, um, go ahead, do me a favor and share this with a friend that you want to see win in 2025. I hope this training was valuable. All right. I'll see you guys in the next video.